Hi, my name is Luke Laffin, and I'm a preventive cardiologist here at the Cleveland Clinic. I'm also medical director of cardiac rehabilitation here. Um, it's a pleasure today to speak with you about uh, the recent abstracts that I presented at the American Heart Association's Hypertension Scientific Sessions um, in September of 2019. What we looked at and the research that we did was understanding or trying to better understand the um, characteristics and the prevalence of resistant hypertension amongst a cardiac rehabilitation population. So as many of you know, cardiac rehabilitation, specifically phase two cardiac rehabilitation, is a 36 session uh, exercise program um, with an educational as well as a uh, healthcare maintenance component to it um, available to individuals that have had stents, bypass surgery, valve surgery, etc. One thing that's never really been looked at in this population is how many people there have resistant hypertension. Now when I say resistant hypertension, I'm not talking about the person on one to two blood pressure medicines. The definition of resistant hypertension is an individual with uncontrolled blood pressure on three medicines, one of which must be a diuretic, and then two other long-acting blood pressure medications as well. Um, if someone's on four medicines to control blood pressure and the blood pressure is controlled, that's also a form of resistant hypertension called controlled resistant hypertension. Anyway, with that background in mind, what we did was we took a retrospective look at um, uh, over the past five years of uh, 500 plus patients that completed cardiac rehabilitation at our center. And we found out their, the uh, prevalence of resistant hypertension amongst that group. Overall, 63% of individuals enrolled in cardiac rehabilitation had hypertension. And of that 63%, uh, 11% had resistant hypertension. So taken as a total out of all the completers of cardiac rehabilitation, about 7% had resistant hypertension. It's not surprising um, given other population studies looking at characteristics associated with resistant hypertension that these patients were older, they tended to be African American, they naturally had higher systolic blood pressure, they had higher pulse pressures, likely reflective of other comorbidities and vascular stiffness and aging. They also demonstrate an increased prevalence of type 2 diabetes and heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Um, it is interesting that only one, only one of the 36 patients with resistant hypertension um, was actually on fourth line therapy for blood pressure, which is a mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist, which was a plurinone, uh, which is a plurinone or spironolactone. Um, additionally, um, before I came, um, only about five to five out of the 36 were actually seen by a hypertension specialist. So it was really important, and I think it's important to understand that cardiac rehabilitation not only provides an opportunity for patients to be to perform a medically supervised exercise program, but to also take care of risk factors. Our exercise physiologists are great at monitoring blood pressure. Um, they get educational component um, to the cardiac rehabilitation as well, talking about healthy lifestyle choices, which all play a role in the control of blood pressure. Um, understanding this prevalence and characteristics is important, but we also wanted to look at some outcomes and see, well, how did those patients do, uh, those patients with resistant hypertension, how did they do compared to other patients without uh, resistant hypertension? Well, we found a few things. One, we found that their exercise capacity um, to start cardiac rehabilitation was significantly lower than those individuals without, um, without resistant hypertension we found um, that their exercise capacity in those that completed cardiac rehabilitation increased a similar percentage to those without resistant hypertension. So that's a positive sign. But um, they also, when they finished cardiac rehabilitation, they had less exercise capacity um, altogether. Um, we also found that those participants with resistant hypertension were more likely to be hospitalized within the next two years um, following completion of resistant hypertension. Again, highlighting the need to recognize this uh, patient population in this subgroup and really refer them and get them into appropriate care. Thank you very much for your time um, and listening to this. For all the um, clinicians out there, I think it's just important to understand how cardiac rehabilitation can affect your patients. And for all the patients that may be watching out there, important to understand that 
um, if you're on three or more blood pressure medicines and your pressure is not controlled, it's really important to talk to your doctor and consider um, consultation with a hypertension specialist. Thanks very much.